Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Craig of the Creek panel at San Diego Comic-Con at home. My name is Philip Solomon. I play Craig and Kid Priest on Craig of the Creek. Um, I'm joined here today by our wonderful panel. We have Ben Levin, co-creator. Hey. Naj Reporter, our supervising director. Hello. Jeff Trammell, our story editor. How's it going? Ashley Hairston, writer and actress on the show. Hello. And last but not least, Deshaun Mahone, supervising director. Hey. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Um, ben, Craig the Creek centers on the Williams family, right? And brings a sense of carefree fun and nostalgia that just resonates with both kids and parents. It's part of why anybody can watch the show. Um, so Ben, how, how did the idea for the show come about? Um, well, so I co-created the show with Matt Burnett and both of us grew up on the East Coast. Uh, Matt grew up in New Jersey. I grew up in Maryland. And in our neighborhoods, we both lived nearby, like a small patch of woods that we would go play in after school. And when we were kids, you know, even though they were like, just, they were so tiny, it's just small, small patch of woods. When you went in there, it felt like you were in a whole other world. And uh, we just thought that would be the perfect place to like set a bunch of kid adventures. Um, so that's really where the idea came from. It's just that part of our childhood. And we set about populating the show basically with like an RPG party of explorers with Craig, Kelsey, and JP. So cool. I love it. Well, now for everyone on the panel, um, how did each of you first get involved with the show? Anybody want to start? I'll take things <laughs> off. Uh, <laughs> uh, I actually met with uh, Matt and Ben really early on, right back when Craig was in development. Um, they were working on the show. They asked me to come in so they could meet with me because they liked one of my uh, scripts. And I got to come in and watch the pilot episode. And I remember coming in and, and I didn't know what the show was or what to expect. And um, <clears throat> I sat down and watched it and it was just enthralled for 11 minutes. Uh, so much so that I watched the pilot three times uh, and then someone from Cartoon Network had to kick me out. And they were like, uh, <laughs> you can't be here watching this cartoon all day. Uh, so I eventually came back and got to meet with the guys and just hit it off. And they uh, asked me to participate on the show as a writer, which has been great. Super cool. I watched the pilot in a Costco gas parking lot. So. <laughs> Seriously. Literally got the Dropbox link and watched yeah. it there. That's the best stuff I <laughs> um, Anyone else want to add to that? How'd you guys get involved? Sure, I could jump in. Uh, kind of similar. Uh, at least I was already working at Cartoon Network on Ben 10, uh, the reboot. Uh, you know, I was doing fine, and then I heard rumblings about it, and then I think I got a message from Ben on Twitter or something about like, Hey, do you want to work on the show or are you interested or something like that? I can't, it's been so long now, but I remember thinking, Oh, okay. Uh, and then Kelly Cruz, uh, took me in to see like the pilot. And when I saw the pilot, I was like, well, I, I definitely want to work on this. How do we make this happen? And then I met with Matt and Ben and then I was like, wow, this is great. These guys seem really cool. The show seems really cool. Yeah. How do I get, uh, into this, and then you know, through a lot of uh, corporate espionage, we were able to get me from Ben Ten over to Craig the Creek. Can't talk about that, but uh, it all worked out. Yeah, no. No, yeah, sure. um, yeah. I was already friends with Deshaun um, before working on Craig. Uh, we'd known each other uh, for a while, um, and he uh, recommended me, and I got test. And I was so excited because um, I saw, you know, the clips and stuff and I just knew it was going to be like something special. Like the show was going to be uh, something really cool and new to work on. Um, plus the art, everything about it. It was it, it looked so cool. I was like, oh, man. And I remember doing the test and being super nervous. <laughs> I was like, I can't mess this up. I got to, <laughs> you know, and it took like the full like week. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> And like, I turned it in, I think like exactly a week, like last minute kind of thing. So I was like, I want to make sure it's perfect. Um, and then 
like later, I think that day <laughs> I had gotten an email <laughs> from Kelly telling me that, oh, they want you to work on it. I was like, ah! <laughs> I was very, I was very happy. <laughs> I was very excited. <laughs> Love it. Ashley? Uh, yeah, I started out as a voice actor on the show. I played the character Ren, who is the Creek scientist. And um, I think just by me, you know, coming in and doing records, I just kind of be came friends with, you know, the crew. And um, and then one day I was like posting that I was looking for writing jobs on Facebook and someone from Cartoon Network saw that post and I got a random email uh, that uh, said, hey, we heard you're looking for writing jobs. Would you like to come in and sit in on a room? And I didn't know what that meant because I hadn't had like a professional (laughs) writing job yet. And I was like, oh, I don't know anything about writing for animation. (laughs) Um, And so I asked a friend to tell me everything. And she was like, you know everything already. You're an actor, you're a comedian, you know how to write jokes and make characters. Um, so you'll be fine. And then I went in and, uh, you know, I was like, this is great. So I started freelance writing for a little bit and then I started, um, full-time staff writing and I owe it all to, I believe, Jeff, because he's the one that saw that post. I didn't know Uh it at the time, but it was Jeff. I owe my life to him. (laughs) Now... Ben, uh, tell us about the show as a whole. How have this story and and the characters evolved from season one to season four? Uh, I mean, everything's evolved just exponentially. I mean, we we just had this like basic idea when we made the pilot and uh, everyone who came onto the show, you know, added a little bit and a little bit and just expanded who these characters are. Um, So whether that was just like bringing parts of their lives for just like little jokes um, that just, I mean, just to, cause we're all on this call, um, in the first episode that Dan Naja did with, uh, Wilder Nessa, there was like a joke that they put in where Wilder Nessa is making fun of Craig. You don't know a thing about animals. That like became sort of the beginning of like, <laughs> a storyline between Wilder Nessa and Craig that like culminates a little bit in season three with, uh, episodes of Breaking the Ice and then Captain the Flag. But that was just a little thing. Like, do you, do you guys remember uh, putting that in there? Uh, yeah, yeah. Dave, that was. <laughs> yeah, I remember putting it in. Uh, I thought it would be really funny if she just didn't like Craig. <laughs> there was nothing more to it than that. It really was just like, it would just be really funny if she was just like, get out of here, kid. You don't know anything about animals. Uh, and then everyone <laughs> took it and kept, kept it going. And uh, yeah, like. It's her character has evolved beyond my wildest dreams. I wouldn't even have seen it. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of discourse online about where Vanessa, uh, and it's great. I love all of it. <laughs> I love that she's a very divisive character. <laughs> love that. Yeah, I'd say that like even not just Wildernessa, but like all the characters, like even like the show, like the way the episodes are written. It's like. Uh, one person started, you know, making things a little wackier and then like the rest of us <laughs> kind of like jumped on that train or like, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, wacky. So like the show just keeps progressively getting a little bit more like some, you know, crazy stuff happening. Uh, <laughs> so I'm sure there'll be more of that to come. <laughs> I want to jump on that too, uh, Naja, to your point, like, I know early on we were playing Mortimer, very just like Mortimer is a bird. <laughs> that was the extent <laughs> of kind of what we would do with him. And I want to say it was Charmaine Dragon who was like, I'm going to just start doing really wacky expressions with Mortimer. And then the rest of the crew was just like, okay, we're all just going to go full crazy on Mortimer to the point where now he's like wielding a sword or speaking <laughs> or <laughs> breathing fire, depending on the episode. Uh, so it really is just like so often these characters start one way and then to, but through the crew, they just evolve exponentially. And, you know, just like tea timers or 10 speeds who kind of come in and have like one gimmick and then get so fleshed out by so many different people who touch and write these characters. Um, it's been crazy to see how far even just, you know, Craig alone has come from like episode one to where he is in season four. And, uh, a lot of that is from the crew and of course Phillips portrayal of Craig and yeah. It's crazy. Now I wanna I wanna stay with you here on the topic of story arcs. Um 
So what is it like planning these arcs for, for the show? And how do you like approach, you know, developing major plot points like um, like the capture the flag, creek lore and and the mysterious King Xavier from the other side of the creek? Uh, man, we're just really good. No. Uh, <laughs> the, <You> are, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's not for me to say. That's for everyone watching to say. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, like a lot of that comes from just figuring out where we wanted to go and having a bit of a roadmap for being willing to go off of that, to kind of stray. Like in season one, we knew that there was this other side of the creek. We didn't necessarily know what was over there yet, but we knew that we wanted to build suspense. And we knew that the green poncho was going to kind of be this border guard. And as the show went on and as, uh, you know, we fleshed out the characters more and the world more, we got to really like figure out what's over there. It's the king, it's Maya, it's this lineage. It's, you know, these former friends and Omar and Maya and uh, Xavier and this entire world that we got to discover kind of as Craig got to discover it. And knowing that like where we were going allowed us to kind of put little plot points in, like the stuff with the ancients and knowing we were going to see that by the time we culminate with the other side and being able to tie those stories together. So um, yeah, a lot of it comes from kind of knowing the big picture and being able to fill in little dots here and there. And then a lot of it has come from kind of being open and, you know, open to what the characters want to see or the crew wants to see what we feel like the characters would react in these situations, even pitches from uh, actors like yourself and uh, H. Michael Croner and Noel Wells and really just fleshing out the characters in those ways. Awesome. I love that. And, you know, I love that our show is like really developing these arcs for every character. And, and that's something that's really special about what we're doing here. And so Najin and Deshaun, as, as our show's supervised and directors, uh, how has your approach to working on episodes changed since you first started? Man, <laughs> uh, quite a lot. I mean, we started as board artists. So um, at first, I think when we did like our first couple episodes, we, uh, and the board artists on Craig write the bulk of the episode, like the script, like the dialogue and stuff, um, along with shots and everything. And when we did our first couple episodes, um, we kind of did them se separate from one another. Like we would take our half and then go off and do um, our section ourselves. Um, but then uh, I figured it might be better if we just did it together because we're a team and we share the same office. It's like, you know, we may as well. So we started writing scripts together uh, and we would do that and then take half of that and then write it. But then we were like, oh man, working on the computer obese, it's just much better to draw like on paper. So we started like boarding together and like writing everything on sticky notes and we would put them up. And, but then that started to take a really long time because we'd have to take all the sticky notes down and then, you know, like scan them, take them over to the printer and scan all of them. So that took forever. So we're like, all right, we're still going to write it together. And then we're just going to like draw. And that's completely different to what we do now because we, we're not board artists, we're supervising directors. So <laughs> we don't like, you know, uh, have as much, uh, as far as like dialogue and, and that sort of thing anymore. So now it's more like broad thinking about like the episodes and like, um, how tying in like old things with like new stuff and, um, coming up with new ideas, uh, much less like nitty gritty than it was when we were board artists. And then just to, anything. yeah, then just to jump off of that too, you know, uh, as directors, we're helping out on a lot more of the production. Like we're not only on the story side, you know, we're making decisions to help out with, you know, uh, color approvals. Uh, we're like running meetings now. We're actually running the storyboard check-ins uh, that we used to have, you know, that we used to be a part of. And now we're like running them and it's, it's kind of fun and also interesting because it's like, oh yeah, we were also storyboard artists. So we get, you know, what uh, the other storyboard artists are going through. Uh, I, I like it. We're, we're assisting, you know, like, do you need anything? You know, we know kind of what you need uh, because we were right there too. So uh, that's like the really good part. Um, and I also like that we just get to talk to more people in the production. When you're <laughs> just storyboarding, that's a lot of work. You're, I feel like Naj and I were in our uh, office all the time, just, like working, you know, kept our heads down, but now it's like we get to engage with everyone and that's really great. Love that. Love that. You know, one of my favorite things about the show is that it reminds us 
pretty often. Um, Craig says this a lot. The Creek is a place for all kids, any and all kids. So is there anything from your childhood personal experience growing up that, you know, has influenced your work on the show? Anybody free uh, questions open. I think for me, uh, there's the, I guess the wish from wish fulfillment of what I wish I had done as a kid. Uh, I was an indoor kid, so I didn't do a lot of the stuff that Craig and his friends do. Um, but you know, because of that, I think that, you know, when it's like, oh, they're going on like this crazy adventure, they're like going on a raft adventure or they're like <laughs> doing a Creek wide game of like the ground is lava. I think it for me, it's like, oh, I wish I had gone on these kind of adventures. And I think a lot of people who watch the show and relate are either people who grew up in their own kind of Creek and have those experiences or people who didn't like me who wish they had. So I do think that it does a good job of kind of like making sure that everyone is able to like see themselves or what they wish they had in the show. I know for me, it's definitely that. I'll take you back on that. Um, I did grow up with a Creek kind of very nearby. Um, so I relate to Craig in that sense. Um, I grew up in Bellevue, Washington, and we had a creek um, not too far away. And me and my two best friends would go there after school and play there every day. <laughs> just like spend hours and hours just like wandering in the wilderness. Um, and yeah, it was just so fun to be kind of free and just outdoors. And, and we would play, you know, <laughs> all sorts of just crazy games <laughs> um, and having adventures. And um, yeah, I, I feel like definitely, you know, uh, I see myself in Craig in that way. And um, yeah, it's just really, it's really fun to be able to bring that personal experience to the show. Um, and also with the family, Nicole, who is Craig's mom, um, she is a Howard graduate and I'm also a Howard University graduate. And so I feel very lucky to be able to sort of, you know, impart uh, my experiences and, you know, memories that I have had at Howard University, just kind of, you know, adding that to the story of who Nicole is and, um, you know, the family aspect of it. Yeah, uh, I grew up uh, in a lot of like, uh, I moved around a lot, but everywhere we went, me and my sister uh, would always find the neighborhood kids and we would play outside a lot. Um, I remember in particular, some places we lived in, uh, this is going to sound like really like, uh, but kids do this. Okay, listen, we would find like dumpster boxes and like stuff by the trash and we would take it and like, find like a little like place in the woods or like a hidey spot and like put the stuff there and be like, this is our club. <laughs> this is our little like clubhouse. And like we would just make stuff out of like the things people would throw away and just leave by the dumpster. Uh, but it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, make up games. Like there was this one where we would get in a box. You had to get a box from the, from the dumpster, like a cardboard box and then get in it and slide down the slide in the park area. <laughs> So it's like, we just do stuff like that. And that's what the show just like really like, like, I don't know. I love thinking about those times, like bringing those memories to the front of my brain uh, when we uh, write stuff for Craig. Yeah, same yeah. here. Uh, yeah, just like, you know, I remember being a kid and just like the whole world was really fascinating to me. And that's the kind of feeling that I put into everything in, that I do on the show. You know, it's like... Uh, we're seeing uh, everything through the eyes of the kids and, you know, just looking back on our own experiences, it just really makes it uh, magical when you're like, oh, you know, I, I feel like a question that we always ask in the writing room is like, oh, uh, you know, what do, what do the kids uh, think about this? You know, like, what are they, what are they thinking? What are, how are we seeing it through their eyes? You know, we're trying to keep it through their point of view. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I do that. I feel like everything that I put into episodes is something that I have done or still do. I don't know. It's all still kids kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. You know, so our show's a uh, voice cast. Uh, I want to talk about that. It's so authentic. Um, it's got this like personal layer that is just, that sets the show apart from really any other show. Um, how do you find your voice talent? Ben, you want to start off? 
Uh, well, we're so lucky to have you on the show because you're ah. such an incredible actor and also uh, such a good energy and good vibe in the studio. Uh, everyone always feels better after hanging out with Philip and recording. Uh, it's it's a real it's a real good time, and you're just you are amazing. Sorry, everybody, I just want to say that. Um, <laughs> The uh, yeah, you're you're incredible to work with, and so we're really lucky to have you um, on the show. Um, the yeah, I mean, the voice talent it depends. Like you know, sometimes it'll be traditional casting. Sometimes you know, it'll just be uh, you know, we'll we'll know somebody that you know we've seen like you know through just like the like the comedy world or like a podcast or something like that um, that we asked to be on the show. Um, and sometimes it's, it's someone on the crew who we're like, oh, you know, it's either what we call a creek sona, like it is the creek version of themselves. And we were like, hey, can you be your creek sona? Can you uh, voice yourself or a character that is very uh, much like created by them? We will have a, a crew member sometimes voice them. Super cool. Like, you know, a lot of you guys play supporting roles in a series. Um, Ashley, Jeff, um, can you tell us about those characters and and uh, the aspects of those characters that you identify with? Like, do you have a favorite line that your character says, maybe? That's dope. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I voice Cannonball as well as Gibson, who's one of Bernard's friends, and a few other people here and there. Um, and, you know, early on, I feel like a lot of Cannonball's personality uh, was kind of, uh, you know, matched to me, uh, which I, you know, appreciate. But uh, he's very, like, chill, low-energy guy um, who's kind of there to have fun. And I f he, he says that's dope a lot. And I used to say that's dope a lot. Uh, <laughs> so much so that it became his catchphrase. That's dope. But, you know, there's also this other side to Cannonball that's been really fun to explore. Um, you know, we've been doing stuff like the Ice Pop Trio. Uh, so I got to be in the booth with you and uh, the person who plays Sparkle Cadet, Kamali Mentor, and just have a ton of fun. Like Ben saying, being in there with you was like, oddly, uh, I don't <laughs> I was nervous, uh, even though I've been directing you for four years. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you guys made it very relaxing and, uh, yeah, just professionals to work with. So thank you for that, Philip. Yo, you shine real good. Yeah, I feel like, though I'm not a scientist, I feel like energy-wise, I'm very much like Ren. Um, she's very passionate about science, but I'm very passionate about lots of things. And when she gets, you know, really into science and talking about it, she just gets kind of like this frantic energy and just kind <laughs> of like skyrockets. And I feel like that is me inside. <laughs> and I'm always kind of having to present, you know, a little calmer, especially in the writer's room. I'm like, a different version of myself, uh, I think, in the writer's room versus when I'm in the booth. Um, <laughs> uh, so just like kind of working both of those muscles. But I definitely identify with Ren um, just in energy and tone and passion. And yeah, she's a really fun character to be able to um, voice because <laughs> uh, you get to scream all the time, you know, it's great. <laughs> I voice several characters in the show. I voice Bobby. Um, I voice Mark, the elder of the creek. And I also voice Tony, Junior Forest Scout. Um, I mean, Bobby is lots of fun. Um, it just started out with me needing to say one line in the pilot. My candy. My candy. And... Um, they were just, we had lots of fun with uh, finding different ways for uh, Bobby to say my candy and turning it into a whole song uh, where he sings about my candy, which was a lot of fun, unexpected. Um, he's really fun to voice. Um, I always have to say that line to get into character. Uh, and also I voice, yeah, voicing Mark is a lot of fun because you get to yell. Like, like uh, Ashley was saying, I get to scream in the booth and I don't think that I'm like Mark I hope I'm not because Mark is a jerk but what's fun about Mark is that he's based on a character from um, the web series that I made with Matt Burnett 
before we created Craig and Creek, he's a character uh, from this web series we made. So he is like an original. Uh, he is the elder of what we've made together. So it's really fun to do that. Now, I wanted to do something different here. I want to go around. Um, everyone uh, say one of your favorite aspects of working on Craig of the Creek. Hmm. Well, that's, that's, all right. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's, that's a tough question. There's so much we do on the show. Um, I think that it's really exciting to see, it's really exciting to work with everyone and see things come together in unexpected ways. You know, you, you come in with a, a story idea and then you see a storyboard artists, what they do with it. And you're like, Oh man, that's amazing. Um, okay. that's like a big thrill. Okay. Do Sean. Uh, I think the, my favorite thing is just like seeing the pitches, you know, seeing everyone, uh, like come together for pitch two, you know, like, cause that's when we pitch to the whole crew and like everyone watching it together and like laughing and, you know, getting that kind of like satisfaction. It makes like the first couple of weeks of like the, the toilet of like working on the board worth it. It's like, Oh, okay. This is everyone liked it. I can rest. Uh, and then, you know, you disappear. Uh, it's great. <laughs> Nadja. I I also love that, but to say something somebody hasn't said, I'm going to say the diversity. I really love the diversity of Craig, not just in in the show, in the characters, um, in the you know all the different aspects of the characters, but our crew as well. Like our crew is just full of diverse backgrounds, and it just adds this very unique flavor to the show that I love. Yeah, I'll piggyback on that. Um, I love when people come up to us and say, you know, oh, my kid, my son, my daughter loves Craig of the Creek. And, you know, we get a lot of fan art, too, of, you know, kids just drawing all of the characters and they're so good. And you can just see that, you know, you can see the love in the fan art. And so I love when, uh, you know, we get people that come and say, you know, we love the show. My kid loves the show. And even adults too. Adults are always like, we love this show more than my kid, you know? And so, yeah, I just love getting the feedback and knowing that people love and support the characters and the stories that we're telling. And I'm, I'm going to say the crew, like this, this show is special and that really boils down to the crew. Like, um, you know, Men Ben were able to bring on so many talented people who are extremely good at their jobs and care so much about what we're doing. Um, every single episode, people are giving it their all. They're willing to share, not just, you know, on the surface level, but, you know, beyond to like, this is how I felt as a kid. This is my background. I want people to relate to the show. I would love to share this so I can see someone like this or so I can see these characters that I didn't see growing up. And it takes a lot to be that vulnerable with the crew and it takes a lot to share that and want people to kind of see themselves reflected. So I will preach about this crew uh, 30 years from now as one of the most talented, hardworking, caring crews I've ever been lucky enough to work with. Yes, it's it's such a family. I'm so I'm so grateful for every season that I get to be a part of it. Um, you know, which brings me to my next thing. Um, lastly, earlier this year, Cartoon Network officially announced that Craig of the Creek has been renewed for a fourth season. Craig and the gang will be back for more Adventures of the Creek. It's coming to your screens really soon. But as a treat for the wonderful viewers who came and watched us and. Is there anything that you can tease from the upcoming episodes, Jeff? Yeah, now that the Capture the Flag War has is ended, and uh, spoiler alert, Craig's side is victorious, um, <laughs> the other side of the creek uh, is kind of open to explore. And Craig, Kelsey, and JP are going to embark on this new quest, uh, as well as with some help from the former Green Poncho, Omar. And we're going to see them really just, like, explore what lies beyond the overpass as well as like meet new friends and go on an even bigger adventure than what we've seen this far of it can't wait just gonna have to be patient you'll see it 
Um, I just want to say this has been a great panel. Uh, it's been my honor to moderate and talk with you guys. Um, thank you for everyone joining us today. You guys can watch Craig of the Creek on Cartoon Network and HBO Max now. And then be on the lookout for season four coming to Cartoon Network soon. Peace.